Welcome to our new video. In the previous one, you've seen the tasks that you'll need for various activities. You will find the link to that video on the top right corner. If activities are a process of phases clearly defined by a beginning and an end that requires a condition of approval, the events are necessary to mark the time frame in a process. There are three main categories of events. The beginning events are characterized by a thin outline. In these videos, you will find them identified in green. In fact, the standard does not specify any color for all the graphics. The end events are characterized by a thick outline. This event is identified in red in the videos. Intermediate events are identified by a double thin contour and in yellow for its representation in our videos. Let's start with the message event. These are events represented with an envelope pictogram. They can be one of two types, send or receive. Receive messages are represented by a thin outline. On the contrary, send messages are symbolized by a full shape and send a message as soon as a token is received. A message event establishes a unique relationship between sender and receiver. For a sent message, there can only be one process to be able to receive it. Thus, the receiving messages are on standby, waiting for a message. In the case of a message event at the beginning of a process, the event is always active and triggers the creation of a token, and therefore an instance of the process as soon as a message is received. For intermediate reception events, as soon as they are activated, they start monitoring for a message, which on reception triggers the rest of the process. As far as an intermediate event of sending a message is concerned, as soon as the token arrives, a message is sent, and the token continues the process. And finally, the event of the end of sending of a message will send a message, then assimilate the token. In a more complete example, as soon as a message is received from another process, a token is created, and the process instance is launched. In turn, the process sends a message and remains in a pending state. Upon receipt of a message, the token moves forward before terminating the process while ultimately sending information to another process. A small clarification concerning the send and receive events. These type of events always exist in pairs. When there is a receive event, there is always a send event. This type of message should not be seen as an email or a mail, but as a characteristic element of the BPMN that looks like a token, but is transmitted between message events. The signal event. These are events represented with a triangular pictogram. The signal event behaves in a similar way to the message events, but unlike the latter, a signal can be sent to several signal reception events. In this example, at the end of a recruitment process, an event sends a signal when a new employee is recruited. The signal is picked up by our two processes, the material preparation process and the company savings plan opening process. The conditional event. These are events represented with a document pictogram. They are triggered by the evolution of a condition that changes to a true condition. For this example, as soon as the order is confirmed, a token is created, which will go through the preparation activity and wait at the intermediate event for the carrier to arrive. Only when this condition is met does the process continue and the token advances through the process. The timer event. These are events represented with a clock pictogram. They are used to give a temporality to the process. In this example, the timer event is triggered on the 22nd of each month. So a token will be automatically created every 22nd of the month. Then when the payslips are ready, the process waits for the last working day to continue. Note that the timer events can be characterized by a cycle, a duration, or a date. The link event. These are events specific to intermediate events and represented by an arrow pictogram. These events are used in the design process to represent a continuity in the flow by avoiding crossing it. In this example of a process, 
Three people are required to intervene for its good realization, but this design makes the flow overlap each other. In order to avoid this bad practice, it is necessary to use the link event. This design is equivalent to the first one as far as the behavior is concerned, but it allows us to stay within the framework of good practices and the flows cannot overlap. Generic events. These are non-specific events. They do not have pictograms. As we have seen, this category of events can be found in the three categories mentioned. That is to say, the beginning, the intermediate, and the end. For start events, they are used for non-anticipated triggers, and like all start events, a token is created. The use of this category of events for an intermediate events indicates to the reader a state which has been reached. End events assimilate a token, and in the case of the assimilation of the last token, the process ends. We will meet again for our next video to explore new types of events. In the meantime, check out this summary of the events presented in this video. While awaiting the new one, remember to subscribe by clicking on this particular event, which I'm sure you're already familiar with.